So you've been using ChatGPT to do basic things like ad copywriting and content writing for your PPC campaign. But what if I told you that you could be doing so much more? This video is going to uncover 10 different prompts that you can use in ChatGPT to make the research and planning phase of your Google Ads campaign so much more efficient. Stay tuned for prompt number eight because I'm gonna share with you the secret prompt that you can use in order to build your campaign completely completely from scratch. By using ChatGPT in the research and planning phase of your Google Ads campaign, you'll be able to save so much time and you'll be able to focus all of your effort on things that actually produce results. Let's go ahead and get started. The first prompt has to do with keyword research and it's what are the top 20 keywords one would search if they are looking for some niche? And in this case, I typed in residential interior designer and with a matter of 10 seconds, I got 20 keywords from ChatGPT for someone looking for a residential interior designer. And this is a really great starting point besides using the Google Keyword Planner, it's a great place to start in order to ideate on keyword research. The next prompt is provide me a list to competitors to a specific company. Now I'm going to type in the specific company and I'm going to type in the city that it's located in so ChatGPT can identify the competitors in that local area and I'm going to click submit and let's see what it comes back with. Okay, so within a few seconds it gave me competitors to zero res carpet cleaning in Irvine, California. Keep in mind that the actual results is going to vary. Sometimes it can be a hit or miss depending on the area because ChatGPT may not actually know the most updated competitors if there's some new businesses that have emerged since the training of the ChatGPT AI platform. Any successful Google Ads lead generation campaign is going to need a robust list of negative keywords and this prompt is going to help you with that. So in this prompt, I am telling ChatGPT to come up with a list of negative keywords for a specific type of company. In this case, I said that the company is a high-end residential architecture firm. And in that case, ChatGPT gave me some negative keywords based off of the description that I provided. You can be actually a lot more descriptive in your prompt in terms of the type of audience that you don't want to attract then it will try to give you some negative keywords that align with that. And in this case, I wrote high-end architecture firm and they then went and tried to find like opposite keywords like cheap, budget, DIY, low cost, because that's not the type of audience that we want to attract. And I'd say that they did a really good job in building out this list that we have now. So I have 25 negative keywords that I can start out with so that I can make sure that I'm not wasting any budget on these types of keywords when I start my campaign. To better understand your target persona, for your campaign, you can ask ChatGPT to help you. And in this prompt, I have asked ChatGPT to help me with identifying an ideal customer for a specific company. And I was very specific with it. Let's take a look. So the prompt is who would be an ideal customer for a locksmith company that offers residential, commercial, and car lockout services. Please provide me the demographics, age, pain points, income, and interests. And this is what ChatGPT came back with. An ideal customer for our a locksmith company, this was the example that I gave it, offers uh, residential, commercial, and car lockout services. The age range is 18 to 65 years old. Uh, gender, both male and female income, middle class to upper class income earners who can afford to pay for professional locksmith services. Here are their pain points. They get locked out of their cars, home or office, lost or stolen keys. So these are situations that trigger people in order to use the service. So this is great. It can help with ad copywriting as well as helping with audience targeting and actually on top of audience targeting, using interests as well. So homeowners, business owners, property managers, all of these things that ChatGPT has listed can help with our Google audience segments and applying them to our campaigns. So this is really fantastic because it really helps us understand our ideal customer persona or ICP so that we can write better ads and pick the right audience in order to target. Now here's a prompt that you probably haven't heard of and it has to do with objections. Why would someone choose not to do business with a certain type of business. And in this case, I chose a car detailer as the example. And ChatGPT gave me many reasons why someone would choose not to do business with a car detailer. And they gave me cost, 
quality concerns, time constraints, DIY preference, lack of need, trust issues, and environmental concerns. And the reason why this is really powerful information to have is because it equips us with enough information to deal with these objections on our landing page content and even within our ads. So then we'll know why people would not want to do business with us so that we can address these ahead of time within the FAQs or even within the ads themselves. Now here's a prompt that's going to help you with keyword research and it's actually based off of keywords that are already performing well in your campaign. So if you already have good campaign performance and you want to find other keywords that are very similar, you can provide ChatGPT with your top performing keywords and ask it to help you find some more that are very similar. So that was the prompt and the prompt was for a bankruptcy law firm. I provided it with the keywords and asked for another 10 that are similar and it came back with 10 additional keywords that are very closely aligned with the ones that I had provided it. If you're stuck on audience segment ideas for your campaign, use ChatGPT to help you get started with this prompt here. And it's, if I were to run ads for a company type in Google ads, what type of audiences should I target? And please include affinity and in-market audiences in your response. In this case, I asked it to help me with audiences for a co-working space. And this is what it came back with. So it came back with business professionals, freelancers, startups, small business owners, entrepreneurs, remote workers. It also provided affinity audiences and in-market audiences for my Google ads for my convenience. So I don't necessarily have to go through the entire list of affinity and in-market audiences when I build out the campaign and I can just use what they have suggested for me. And this is a really great starting point if you don't know where to get started on the audience segments. If you're finding value in this video so far, I would love if you could take a second to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to this channel. And now I'm gonna go ahead and share my favorite tip that helps me build campaigns completely from scratch. This is great for beginners, but not just for beginners, it's great for everyone because it helps with mapping out your campaign in a very organized fashion. Now, now the prompt is provide me an example of a Google ads campaign that can be used for a company type and a place. So in this case, I chose orthodontist in Seattle and I even told ChatGPT that I wanted it to give me a lot of details like campaign name, target location, languages, networks, devices, ad group name, keywords. I pretty much told it to build me a Google ads campaign from scratch. And this is what it came back with. Pretty much gave me everything that I had asked for now, just be mindful that you'll have to double check this because it might not be fully accurate, but it's a really great place to start for mapping out your campaign, especially if you're not really that experienced with Google ads. So it starts with the campaign name, target location, languages, networks, devices, it gives me an ad group name, it gives me keywords, and it gives me one type of ad. It even gives me a suggestion for a landing page, and it even gives me a budget recommendation, which I'm not sure how it came up with a budget for me, but that's kind of cool. Um, and it even gave me an ad schedule and some caveats to note as we are building out the campaign. So again, it's a really great place to start for beginners. And I hope that this was valuable. You already know that ChatGPT can help you with keyword research, but did you know that it could actually take it a step further and give you monthly search volumes? This prompt is going to show you exactly that. And it's give me a Google ads keywords for a specific type of business in a specific geography, and then format them in a table with the monthly search volumes. And in this case, it gave me a table with the keyword on one side and the monthly search volume on the other side. And it's sorted it from the largest to smallest volume so I can easily see which keywords generate the most volume. And this is a really great place to start. They pulled these keywords and the monthly search volume from the keyword planner. So just keep in mind with ChatGPT, it's only been trained up to the year 2021. So it will not have the most accurate data 
as of now in terms of the monthly search volume, but this does give you directionally an idea of which keywords during that time that it was learning was generating the most search volume. If you want to actually see the true search volume, you'll have to check the Google Keyword Planner. Another great way to use ChatGPT is to prompt it based off of the previous question that you asked it. And in this case, I have prompted it based off of the last question that I provided it in the last prompt, which was give me the keywords for a locksmith business and format them in a table with monthly search volumes. And then it gave me this table. The next question that I provided it was in terms of the prompt was, can you then add an additional column to that table and then filter the keyword search intent by marking them as top, middle, and bottom of the funnel keywords? And this is really great because ChatGPT will be able to help you identify the specific search intent so you know how you might want to organize your campaign and ad groups. You might want to then decide, well, if it's bottom of the funnel keyword, then I might want to allocate more budget towards the bottom of the funnel rather than top of funnel or vice versa. So whatever your complete strategy is, definitely use ChatGPT to help you with this organization, but also be sure that you double check ChatGPT's work because just like any other junior associate, ChatGPT is not perfect. So just double check it and make some tweaks as you need to. So now you can see there's a lot of prompts that have taken you deeper than just the surface level prompts that you've seen on ChatGPT. And hopefully you learn some great prompts that you can leverage to your advantage when it comes to planning and researching for your Google Ads lead generation marketing campaigns. If you found this video helpful, I will also drop a blog in the description below, the accompanying blog to the specific video so you can see all of the prompts as well as a bonus prompt. So go ahead and check that out. I also have the ultimate guide to Google ads, which is a ebook that I put together on how to best use Google ads for your business. Click the notification bell because this is the first video in a series of ChatGPT prompt videos. The next video in the series that I'm going to do is ad copy creative and the following video has to do with analytics and reporting. So you're gonna find out a lot about different prompts that you can leverage to your advantage that you probably didn't know about when it comes to creative as well as reporting and analytics with Google Ads and ChatGPT. Please stay tuned for that. It's coming out very soon and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.